Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Clyde Pierce, a pediatric emergency medicine physician and injury researcher at Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. Today, I'm excited to tell you about a tool named TIN4 that can improve our ability to recognize when a child or infant has been abused. Several years ago, I noticed that the bruising on abused children looked very different than children who were bruised by accidental injury or from regular play. This makes sense because having an accident injures your body differently than the injuries you get from maybe a physical assault. These unusual bruises really stood out to me because I noticed they often occurred on children prior to a serious or even fatal injury from physical assault. These atypical bruises were often overlooked by family members, daycare workers, social workers, or medical providers, likely because bruises are so common and usually insignificant clinically. But like a canary in a coal mine, these unusual bruises can serve as a warning or a signal of what's to come. Specifically, our research team noticed the bruises were unique. They occurred in different locations on the body, such as the ears or the jawline. Some of them occurred on young infants, which didn't make sense for babies who aren't even yet crawling. The team first worked with nurses and a biostatistician out of the University of Louisville and gathered pilot data on patients in the intensive care unit there. This work led to our initial bruising clinical decision rule named 10-4. 10 is a rule that applies to children under four years of age with bruising. The T-E-N acronym stands for bruising to any of the following regions, torso, ear, or neck. And the four stands for any bruising anywhere on the body of an infant four months of age and younger. The bruising clinical decision rule, 10-4, is why we're bringing attention to this on October 4th, which is also 10-4. After moving to Chicago, our research team continued this work with the wonderful support from Lurie Children's. We were able to obtain a major grant from NIH to validate our bruising clinical decision rule that differentiates abuse from accidental injury in young children. This grant allowed us to collaborate with other children's hospitals as well, including the University of Louisville and Comer Children's Hospital at the University of Chicago. After years of research, the final rule we developed is called 10 Faces P. This latest clinical decision rule is both sensitive and specific for identifying young children who are suffering abuse. This is promising for many reasons, but especially because it may allow us to see when things are going wrong before it escalates to permanent injury or to even death for a child. Like the canary in the coal mine, being able to see these warning injuries before it escalates is a critical key for the prevention of child abuse. So what does the acronym 10 Faces P stand for? If a child under four years of age has bruising to the 10 or torso, ears, or neck, torso, ears, or neck, or four, meaning bruises anywhere to an infant four months of age or younger, or faces, which stands for frenulum, which is a little soft tissue inside the gum, angle of the jaw, cheek, the fleshy part, the eyelids, or the subconjunctiva, which is the white part of the eyes, or a pattern to the bruising, such as a slap mark or a loop mark. Noticing the little things like a bruise allows us to potentially make a big difference in the life of a child at risk of abuse. Thank you for your time and attention to this work. The first step to prevention of further harm for these children is often just being able to see when things are starting to go wrong and then helping. Thank you.